Okay, so let's continue the chapter 11. So uh, last week we actually covered very basic function of the, how we can deal with the time series data set. And then today we're gonna we're gonna study a little bit more more complicated kind of a data manipulation technique for the time series data. So in here it is first thing we actually it starts with the uh, I'm John Hendry, which is the, uh, as you know, we we all have a time under the time zone area, right? Because in my case, I'm living in California, so I actually have a Pacific Pacific daytime zone. Maybe you are you are living in the Nigeria, so you also have a Nigeria time set time zone. So every part of the world has the different time zone, and then. Sometimes we have to we have to thinking about the, how we can standardize those time zones by using the coordinate universal universal time, which is the UTC. That is a kind of a very standardized standardized time representation of the how we can standardize how we can get the standardized time zone, right? And then in Python there is the a uh, package called PyTZ, which is a Python Python time zone library. And then whenever you have a time zone set in here, and then uh, it actually have a list of the different time zone and then a different kind of a, a UTC information for the each time zone. And then, for example, if you can have a time zone for the New York, that means it is a uh, minus one day and then, and then the now, is a standard time zone gonna be set up like this. And then we also try to do the time zone localization and then a conversion. Like uh, for example, if we have uh, this time set and then a period of the six, and then we can try to print, print the time zone index. We don't have uh, any kind of a time zone index right now, but data ranges can be generated with the time zone set if we can, setting up the, this universal coordinated universal time zone defined. Maybe we have uh, this, all of the, these time zones gonna be converted into the standardized time zone, which is the UTC. And then if you wanted to localize the time zone, we can actually run the, this command like a localize. And then based on that, we can try to localize uh, this UTC time zone. Set. And then if you want to do this UTC time zone to the more localized time zone, like a convert, like a, for example, this one is actually try to convert into the UTC time zone to the New York, New York time zone, which means Eastern, Eastern Standard Time Zone. So that means actually that one is, this one is actually UTC time. And then negative five means it is uh, negative five hours, so five hours uh, be before. So that means, in this case, UTC time zone is the 4.30 a.m. in March 9th. But in the New York time, it's gonna be uh, March 8th, 11.30, okay? This is gonna be, Maybe in the New York time zone is uh, March 8th, 11, maybe 23, 30, 11.30 p.m. because of the, this negative five. And then, and then you also kind of wonder why this one is uh, changing into the negative four in, in case of the March 11. Actually, this is because of the, this, between the, these two time in the US, has the time time converting system, which is the summer time. So that actually kind of a kind of a day day saving time. So it is actually try to one hour, uh, push it forward to the one hour. Uh, so that means before the before the before the summer time, it should be. 6.30 a.m. Uh, no, no, 4.30 a.m., but 
after the summer time, like a day saving time zone, one hour gonna be added. That's the reason why we have a 5.30 kind of thing and then a four hour kind of thing, okay? That's the how it works, okay? So, so this kind of a zone, like uh, like we said, we can actually localize uh, this kind of uh, UTC to the some specific localized time zone. And also we can try to converting this one to the UTC, right? So basically the, the, the convert and the localize are almost the same function. Yeah, yeah. It's a kind of a how we can converting the UTC to the local time zone and also how we can convert it to, from the local to the UTC. So from UTC to the local, this is the kind of a TG, uh, TG convert. And then local time zone gonna be defined. And from local to UTC, we can try to do the lo t local TG convert and UTC. This is how it works, okay? And then also we can convert into the, maybe if we wanted to do the Berlin time zone, we can also do the same thing, okay? Actually, when we say about the UTC is the, U do you know the, what is the UTC point? It is actually located to the Greenwich in, in UK. That's the, that's the UTC uh, time, time point. There is a uh there is a place for the Greenwich time uh time observatory center in, in I think then in, in London, I guess. So there is that is the standardized time zone. And then from there, we actually standard standardized time gonna be set up. Like a one hour, one hour ahead and then one hour lag behind kind of thing. Okay. Because like, okay, for example, in here, this, this is a UTC in location in the map. Maybe in, in, the, in the east is the plus one, like, uh, like a Berlin is right here. And then New York is here. So it's the west is the negative. And then the east, east is the positive. So it's the plus. Uh, our gonna be added from the east of the UTC. The west of the UTC time is subtracted from the that UTC time zone. Okay. That's the how it convert. This okay. is like the, the the GMT. I think it's uh, it's the same thing as the GMT. Yeah, it's the GMT. Greenwich yeah. Greenwich time. Yeah. Okay. Meridian. UTC yeah. is the Greenwich time. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so next thing is uh, just kind of a simple operation about the time zone or where time stamp objects. So it's about the kind of uh, by using the this localization and converting options, we can also try to using the time stamp functions, we can also convert into the time stamp at the, some specific time zone, right? And then also, also we can convert it back to the back to the this time zone to the UTC, et cetera. That's the thing. And then also operation between the different time zone means we can actually get the, uh, some different time zone gonna be the combined, result gonna be the UTC. What does that mean is the two different time zone is the difference. So we cannot uh, using the that two different time zone at the same time. So what we can do is the converting to the those two time zone into the, the UTC time and then combining it. That's the how it operates. Okay. That's the how it works. All right. And then the other thing is the some kind of a period and then a period of arithmetic. That means that just kind of a period calculation. So when we say about the period, period is a just kind of a specific time span, which means it's a kind of a, a little bit scalar kind of a value. So like a amount of the time passed from the starting to the end. 
So this is the period. Okay. This, how much it passed, like uh, from zero to three, that means period gonna be three and six, like this. Okay. This is the time span, like a period. Okay. So when we try to use in the this period functions, like a frequency is the all to December. That means it's a kind of a year, year based period. So in, in this case, period actually covers January 1st, 2011 to December 31st, 2011. So all year in this case. Okay. So when we try to from P plus O, pi, this one is what is called the year shift because uh, this period actually has the year kind of a time span. So five means what is the after the fives? So that means 2011, 2012, and then 2016 gonna be the five period, after the five period, right? And then negative two gonna be 2010 and 2009. So 2009 means it's the January 1st, 2009 to December 31st, 2009. Whole year gonna be the period, one period. Okay. And then also we can try to calculate in the period, may a period and period. And then that actually calculating about the amount of the time spent. So that means we have a 12 month as a as a year time and then a multiply by three. So that's the 36th month. And then it is actually three period difference between 2011 and 2014, which is the correct, right? And then also we can say about the time series range is gonna be by monthly. And then we can try to do the, this one gonna be the period range gonna be the first, second, and third, like a monthly, okay? So when we say about the January 2000, year 2000 means uh, January 1st to 30th in 2000. That's, that actually aggregate into the one period. That's the how it works, okay? Same thing in the bottom. So it's a, it's a kind of a how we... Maybe if we can try to do the quarterly one, like this, quarter to December, that means we can actually have a, a January to a March is the quarter one. And then April to June is quarter two, et cetera. And then a December and set, uh, October to December is the quarter four. Okay, this one is. Quarter December means we can divide in the period as a quarterly, but it ends with the December. That's the how we can set up the some of the way to set up the this kind of quarter quarterly uh, time index. And then period frequency conversion means depending on the how we can define the these frequencies. Okay, like a S frequency is gonna be the start or end, we can keep converting to the this one based on the this period. Start means is the weekend based on the January gonna be the starting. End means the December we're gonna try to try to uh set up the December gonna be the our end end date or end the time time period in end of the time period. Okay, like this. So as you can see here, maybe if we can try to do the period 11, 6, June 11, 2011 and month means whole month as a one period. Maybe from January to the December, entire year gonna be the period, gonna be the, this one is the start and this one is the end. And then 
as frequency actually means how we can, when we try to do the period, when we try to identify the that period from start date or end, end month. Start, start month, starting month or end month. That's the kind of uh, try to set up the, some of the, uh, some of the criteria point to define the, our period, okay? And then period index is uh, just kind of the same thing. Right. Like uh, we can try to set up the, this kind of period index, like a ERA period. And then we can use in those one as a index for the pandas series data or data frame data, et cetera. And then we also try to do those things as a monthly to the start as a period convert conversion. So all, everything has the January gonna be the standing point. Or maybe if you wanted to do the end one, which means all of the, these things is the end one. So how we can set up looking at the, that period from where, like a starting start month or end month. Okay, quarterly period is also the same. It is actually depending on about the where we gonna we gonna starting uh starting to the quarter. Like uh, we can start the uh, January as a starting month as a quarter. That means we have a January. January means uh quarter four. Like uh, this one gonna be the quarter four from the January, and then. And then when we try to do the starting one, it's, uh, it's kind of a November 1st, gonna be the date kind of a frequency. So like uh, maybe rather than the looking at the, this one, maybe when you're looking at the, this figure 11.2, you can easily figure out the, what, what does that means. So when we try to QDC, which means that this one is the end, ending month, ending. So that means fourth quarter gonna be ended right at just exactly to the end of the December. This is the quarter four. And then based on the, this one, we can set up the third quarter, second quarter, and first quarter, okay? When we say about the September, end of the September gonna be the end end of the quarter uh, fourth quarter. That means from October to the December, we had that is actually become the first quarter of the next year. Same thing for the February. Maybe end of the February gonna be the fourth quarter. That means uh two thousand uh two. 2000, uh, 2011, December to the February in 2012, those three months gonna be the fourth quarter. And then the quarter one gonna be the next year quarter, like a, like a 2012 to the March, et cetera. So that's the how we can set up and define the frequency conversion of the quarter by quarter, okay? Yeah, he was mentioning that like this is the uh, reason why he's bringing up this because, you know, it depends on the, the, the fiscal year that uh, the particular yeah, cause, company, uh, company is, yeah. Yeah, because uh, usually in case of the, this quarter September in, here, in this case, usually the Every fiscal year in the U.S. actually ends with the August or September, right? So this is going to be the last quarter. Yeah. And then from September or October, it starts the next year, kind of a quarter starts in the in the business or finance kind of a kind of industry. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So that's why this is yeah. quite interesting. Yeah. So that's the kind of a very useful to set up the this kind of. A, quarterly period frequency conversion, okay? And then also we can try to do the timestamp period, gonna be the timestamp at the start of the period by the default. And then also we can have a set the range for the P by the quarterly period. 
and then the frequency gonna be the uh, January. So January gonna be the end period, right? So that's the that's the thing we can set up the this kind of a quarter. If we have a uh, January gonna be the end of, end month of the quarter, uh, quarter uh, fourth quarter, right? Is that does it? Is it understand what you mean? Okay. Yeah, it's 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 quite bad. Yeah. And then next one is the converting to the timestamp and then period and back. So it is it is also kind of a kind of a calculation of the if we have a, this kind of a timestamp like a date, and then to to period function we can try to convert in to the all of the, these things into the period, assuming that. This last date gonna be the representation of the whole month in this case with a time span. Okay. And then also the same thing, like a two period and then a monthly means maybe if we have uh, this 29th and 30th and 31st, all of the, these things gonna be the representation of the January kind of a period, right? Based on the date, it is just corresponding to the to the that monthly period. Even if we have the timestamp, right? And then also we can try to convert it back to the period period to the timestamp. Maybe end one gonna be the like uh, this one like uh, end exactly end of the time zone, right? Time set. This is the how we can try to converting the period to the timestamp. And then creating the period index means if we have a, this kind of a data frame in, in Python, we have a year and quarter in this case by combining these two things together by using the period index in here and then we can get the this kind of indexing data set and then based on the this if we can use in the this index for the index data and then we can aggregate the all of the this outcome based on the this quarter quarterly indexing this thing is how it works okay i'm sorry Do you understand Sorry. what I mean? So it's it's a kind of a in here data frame in here. No, no, I understand, I understand this of... concept. You were saying something, so I just wanted to. I, I understood this. You were yeah. saying something so, at the end, so I didn't hear. I didn't hear you. That's why I'm asking. What you were saying? Mm. Yeah, you it's... didn't hear the last one. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't hear the last one. Use... Was like, what was I'm breaking. saying That's is, why... so we can using this this quarterly quarterly index quarterly index as kind of a, our our low index index label in the in the data frame yeah that's what i talk about yeah yeah I, uh, this is this is yeah. quite useful you know if, especially if you're getting yeah some statistics you know it, it makes it very easy and yeah. you can use it yeah because uh, yeah if you get the if you get the year and quarter as a separate data set separate column Within the data frame, we can using those two time time rep, rep, uh, column representing the time. We can come. We can using those time as a period or a quarterly period, and then using that as a low label index like this. That's yeah, the, how it works. Use the group by like we see before, and yeah. summarize all with this and. Make it easier to understand the data. Yeah. And then the next one is uh, we talk about the resampling and frequency conversion, which is also another uh, useful tool. Like a resampling in the time series data set is a kind of a group by function. Okay. So for example, if we have uh, from the starting starting date is the January 1st in 2000, 
and then the period is uh, 100 days, that means we have a 100 day data, right? And then in this case, one day equals one, one period, right? So 24 hours is the one period. We can also resample in the monthly, which means we can aggregate all of these date period into the monthly period. And then we can calculate those, all of the, those value as a mean, as a representation value, which is this, right? Based on the end, end the month. And then if we can try to do the period, we can get the, this period, like, a, like a 31 days, 29 days, uh, mean calculation, et cetera, depending on the, by the month, right? So resampling is a kind of a group by function in time series data. So table 11.5 actually show you about the all different kinds of functions or argument you can use in the that, that resample method, okay? Uh, and then the when we try to do the this kind of a resampling of the time series, there is a two way we can do for the sampling. First one is the down sampling. Down sampling means we can aggregate the data is the lower frequency. So we down sampling is actually try to do the aggregation of the data. So frequency gonna be much lower. So that means. If we have a day, day days, uh, time series data based on the days, maybe when we down sampling the data, we can can be do the monthly data, which is the much lower frequency, right? Three hundred sixty five days to the twelve month, right? Which is the much lower frequency rate, right? That's the how it works. So for example, in here, we have a 12 period of the every, every hour, every hour data. And then when we, um, no, every minute data, maybe if we want to, if we wanted to resample to the every five minutes, which means uh, zero to four, and then five to nine and 10 to 11, 10 to, 10 to 14, et cetera. So that's the how we can, calculating all of the, these things, okay? So, and also there is a kind of a function about the, how we can set up, setting up the, where is the closed, closed, closed date timestamp, timeline? Like, a, like a where do we have to cut off when we try to aggregate down sampling of the time series data set? When we try to do the close to right, that means we can have a, we can have a close to right means every, in case of the every five minutes, we can also include the 905 in this case. So 901 to 905 is the leveling close to right. Okay. Close to left means we exclude the, uh, 905, and then we only get the nine, nine o'clock to the 904, like uh, exactly 904 to 59 seconds, et cetera, 999 seconds. Just before the 905, exactly, excluding that. Okay, that's the close to left, and then uh, this one is actually default function. compared to the close to right, okay? And then the next one is the kind of what is called the open, high, low, close, the resampling, like a OHLC kind of thing. So how this one works is uh, computing the four values for the each bucket, like the first open and last close and maximum and minimum values, okay? So that means we can try to open the where and then a closing setting up 
and uh, between the those two, we can get the maximum value and lower value. Some kind of a uh, way of the descriptive statistic for the time series data set based on the their their time their value within the their time span. That's the how kind of how it looks like. And then upsampling means is a kind of a disaggregation kind of method. Okay. This one is actually disaggregation. And then we actually disaggregate about the value based on the disaggregated time stamp. So that means we also need to be interpolating the some values because for example, in here, if we have uh, every Wednesday, every Wednesday weekly data set for the four different column, maybe if we can disaggregate this one as a day function, we don't have any, any other data set of the Thursday, Friday, Sunday, and Monday, and Tuesday data. We don't have any of these data, right? Because it's the disaggregate from the disaggregate data set. So we don't have any information about these things. So maybe as we run in the previous last week, we can just try to fill in the some of the value, like a full field forward value, like a F field. This one is a forward field. That means if we have a this value in the week uh Wednesday week, before the next Wednesday week, Wednesday in the next week, all of the value between the those two time span gonna be the same value for the this Wednesday values, right? This one is the how we can try to do the forward field, FFIM, okay? And then we can also limiting the, the repetition of the repetition of number of repetition to fill in the, those values up to the two times, right? And then this one is a still, Still NAN, like a null. Okay. And then also we can try to resampling with the period. Like uh, if we have uh, this information of the January to the uh, May, and then if we can resample to the all year value, and then uh, get the mean, means we can get the 2000 and 2011 values, right? And then quarterly means we can we can group by the every quarter with the value and then calculating uh, calculating the field for field. Okay. Like this. That's the how it works. So it's a uh, quite straightforward and sim simple. But the thing is that this one is actually kind of a disaggregation technique. So I personally do not recommend uh, this kind of a forward field or backward field kind of a value setting, like a permutation. This is the too much them simple and then uh, actually loses the sum of the variation across to the time series. So I personally do not recommend to using the, this kind of a permutation technique because it's the two, it's actually sacrifices uh, kind of a variations within the, within the observation, within the data set, okay? So I personally do not recommend it. But this one is a just kind of ideal kind of example about how it works, okay? Yeah, yeah. And then we, yeah, and then we can also do the group time resampling, which is the group time, grouping the time resampling at the aggregation. So if we have a uh, every frequency one minutes, and then the period is the fifteen kind of things, and then we have a uh, this kind of a uh, data frame, and then we can set the index to time as an index, and then when we try to resampling it every five minutes and then account, that's the how we can set up the some of the time index based on the some resampling criteria. Okay, 
And then also we can assign to the some of the key, another key value as a second index. And then by using the this group of functions, and then a group by and from some form function, we can actually get the all different time based on the different key group values. Just kind of a, the way we organizing the time series data set with the hierarchical indexing system. Okay. And then we can also reset the index. So just return, returning back to the key and time as a separate column in the in the data frame. From here to here, like the reset index. Right. Any questions so far? It's so quite straightforward right now, because uh, but it is quite complicated depending on the how what kind of a data set you have to aggregate. Because uh, I personally think that you you if you wanted to get familiar with uh, these kind of approaches, you have to really have a good understanding about the some specific term, like uh, what the period, what does the term period mean or timestamp, or day and date. And then what's your own criteria about the setting up the period or time span, et cetera. Those are the very important when you try to resampling or grouping the all of the, these time series data set for your manipulation or for the analysis. Okay. Yeah, I think this part is it's, it's, it's very straightforward because we have seen all these methods previously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's and it's also different. in R also has the same approaches. So yeah, you can actually compare also it is also good practice to compare how Python and R deal with the time series data. Actually, Python seems to be have a more more better and straightforward function about the way to the sampling and aggregating and disaggregating the data set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so next one is what is called uh, moving moving window function. This one is uh, just kind of a, how we can evaluate the, some of the time series data set. Like uh, if we have uh, some of the, these kind of a very noise kind of data set, rather than to looking at the whole graph as a whole, we can actually dividing some specific fixed window and then looking at those things separately like here is the uh, here is the more like a straight line like this and then this and this and this and this maybe this and then this and maybe maybe this so what is the moving window does is we, if we can set up the very fixed window, which means the fixed time span to look at the, those observation data, we can try to simplify the those uh, some specific relationship between the some specific time span. Like a, like a simplify our approaches like this. Okay. So what is the important in this case is how we can set up a, this time span to optimize into our outcome. So that means if we have a very narrow, that means we can fit the every single kind of a kind of a sampling outcome as a time like this. But the thing is that this one is what is called the overfitting. That means when the new data comes in, that model does not uh, does not estimate the good does not have a good prediction power with the new data set because it is a very overfitting with the observation currently observe the data set. 
maybe if we can have a two large time span, in this case, it is underfeeding, which means the, within the time span, there is a too much variation within the, this time span. But in this case, we have a two simple, very simpler modeling outcome. So that means when we try, when we have a new data set comes in into the model, this one also does not producing the exact value outcome. Okay, it's gonna be the much biased kind of a calculation. So how we can try to good have a good time span? Moving window gonna be the very important. Okay like this so in this case uh in this case how we can try to setting up the setting up the this uh this noisy time series observation data set by using the simple window and then a simplifier this curve gonna be the very important to looking at the uh data set time series data set as a whole okay So that's the how it works. And then uh, there is a kind of a method called a rolling. Rolling means uh, kind of a kind of a how much fixed data we can set up, like a behavior to the group by. So that means it actually grouping over the 250 days sliding window. That means we have uh, the, about this amount of the 250 days as a window fixed window. That's the how rolling is about. Very simple function of the law. Okay. Or maybe expanding the moving mean, like expanding in case of the rolling, you can also try to expanding the rolling, like 250 days to the expanding. That actually calculating the more kind of a uh, flexible kind of approach to rather than the fixing of the exact date of the days days as a moving window. And then uh, another function we can also think about is the exponentially weighted function, which means the EL, EWN, like exponential weighting. And then we can also setting up the span, okay? And then a minimum time period. And we can actually set up the this exponential more standard, more exponential, exponentially kind of a time curves based on the all of the moving outcome. And then also we can think about the binary moving function when we have a two only two time series, like this straight line, like this, like this. And then compared to the what's the changing is about more simple kind of things. And also last one is a user defined one. Like uh, if you can try to calculate, if you have uh, your own function or your own formula to, to determine to the time span based on the some, some context of the, this noise, noisy observed data set, maybe we can set up the, some of the, our own moving window setting functions making a more flexible window setup to understanding the relationship between the X and Y within the then specific time frame, time moving window. So that's the end of the chapter 11. And then um, actually most of the part is the chapter 11 actually covers about the, how we can manipulate in the time series data set. But the thing is that 11.7 is just kind of a briefly kind of a understanding about the how we can uh look we can see the our time series observation data set and then how we can simplify those noisy data set into the more simpler kind of a linear or exponential relationship between the our outcome and our uh respond uh, our independent variable. Okay. So that's the end.